Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Kesteven series. This is a large Lincolnshire district centred around the town of Sleaford. There's 75 parishes here, so let's take a look at one of them. I'm not going to lie, today we are very wet. Very, very, very wet. The rain is coming down in bucket loads. <laughs> and I'm already soaked because I've done three villages already this morning, but it's not going to stop me doing another one, is it? Welcome back to North Kesteven, everybody. Behind me, you can see an old schoolhouse. There we go, an old schoolhouse right there. Now, this is right next door to the current school. If I turn the camera slightly, I'll show you the current school. There it is. So we've got the old school right next to the new school in this place. And you'll find both of these schoolhouses in the parish of Brant Bruton and Stragglethorpe. The North Kesteven series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one-stop shop located at 20 Ropery Road, Gainsborough or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Here's one I've been looking forward to for a while. When I lived in Lincolnshire, I would often frequent the village of Brant Bruton through one of my former jobs. Together with Stragglethorpe, it forms a parish which sits either side of the A17 Sleaford to Newark Road. Note that unlike the North Lincolnshire town of Broughton, this is Brant Bruton, despite it being spelt the same way. Its name means fortified settlement on the River Brant, and that river flows to the east of the village where it's joined by Sand Beck. Although it was never on the Great North Road, Brant Bruton's main street was frequented heavily by travellers. Its main street is a very wide affair, and it's lined with gorgeous 18th and 19th century houses, a lot of which were once occupied by people from London, who used Brant Bruton as a country retreat. I think we call them second homes now. The two main landmarks here are the Church of St Helen, which is one of the most elegant in Lincolnshire, and a converted barn, which is used to this day as a Quaker meeting house. Famous people associated with the village include the theologian William Warburton, who lived in Brant Bruton for 18 years. He would go on to become the Bishop of Gloucester. And all of that is before we've mentioned little old Stragglethorpe, and that's another lovely historic village on its own. Shall we walk? I say we should, but you need your max on because it was absolutely tipping down in this one. Let's go. We begin with a drive through the village of Stragglethorpe, which used to be its own separate parish until it was merged with Brant Bruton in 1931. Stragglethorpe has always historically been associated more with the land to its immediate west rather than to its immediate north, namely Beckingham and not Brant Bruton. Repeatedly, it's referred to in records as Stragglethorpe in the parish of Beckingham. Although the village is tiny, it still has a few key landmarks. 
One of these is the Elizabethan Stragglethorpe Hall, a country house dating back to the 16th century. However, the one that most people are interested in here would be St Michael's Church. It's a Grade 1 listed building dating from the 11th century and it's under the care of the church's conservation trust. It's full of history, including lots of monuments and memorials to the Earl family, former lords of Stragglethorpe Manor. Despite that, very little is recorded about the family in any historical records. Let's check the church out. So according to the signs, the church here in Stragglethorpe is open. So let's go and have a look, shall we? Here we go. Up the little path to the front porch. And there it is, the door is indeed open. So let's go in. It'd be good to get out of the rain actually for a few moments. Blimey, it's dark. Is there a light switch? I'm hoping there is somewhere. <laughs> can't see one. Might encounter one as I walk through this. Anyway, let's see. Here we are then inside the church. It's a simple enough building. Got an aisle on the north side and uh, obviously just a nave and a chancel all in one unit. Let's wander into the chancel. Let's have a look at this. Altar at the top here. Looking very yellow. There's a massive tablet to the left here. Look at this stretches all the way to the ceiling. Wow, let's have a read of this. So it says, Richardus Earl Baronet and some Latin and the year 1697. And all that's written in Latin as well, I think. There's no way I can translate that. If anyone has any, um, any Latin knowledge, let me know what that says, won't you? <laughs> So we've also got a pulpit here, some box pews as well, look at this. These look like they've been uh, restored a little bit because they're definitely not, I wouldn't say they're the originals. They don't look like the originals to me, they don't look weathered enough. <laughs> Other than that tablet, there's a few things on the wall. We've got a big crest up here. There's a plaque underneath this crest uh, and this is to do with uh, the First World War. It's a First World War tablet memorial. Um, it remembers Harry Tompkins, George Davis and Charles Papworth. Three men. Oh, there's four. Sorry, I do apologise. There's four. There's one at the top there. So there's four men there listed in World War One. Let's go back up here. Let's see what we've got here. I still haven't found that light switch. There's another tablet here on the wall. Let's head into the little pews it's going to be very dark this this says in memory of john the only son of richard and mary ann tong of this parish and grandson of william tong of east stockwith in the county of lincoln 21st of december 1916 aged 85 years and of elizabeth tong his wife aged 62 1896 and their children richard ingle tong and gertrude annie tong 79 and 90 years of age respectively. So Stragglethorpe has got a connection to West Lindsay then, to the parish of East Stockwith, if you can remember that episode from a long time ago. Okay, um, pretty much it I think. Lovely little place, lovely church. It's great that it's open and we can see inside it. Let's head now into Brant Bruton, which is the bigger of the two villages in this one. Stragglethorpe is a nice place, don't get me wrong, but Brant Bruton has got a lot more. Our main walk begins on Mill Lane outside Brant Bruton's unusual modern school, and the answer as to why it's unusual lies next door. This is the old Wesleyan Methodist schoolroom which was built in 1852. In 1871, Brant Bruton gained an Anglican church school. They both outgrew their buildings and then merged together. That's why the current school is both a C of E and a Methodist school. The old Wesleyan Chapel itself is a much larger and more imposing building. This closed in 2003 and is now in residential use. So let's go for a wander around now. Brant Bruton is a very historic village. A lot of it used to be owned by Sir John Sutton. In 1872 he owned half the parish. Other associated names here include Reeve, Dunn, Millington, Wilson, Howson and Rollingson. 
Brant Bruton was considered to be at that time a major village for hunting. It wasn't just a pastime, it was almost a way of life. The Suttons were great hunters. In fact, Sir Richard Sutton, who died in 1855, was considered to be one of the greatest huntsmen of his time. Let's have a look at some buildings. On Church Walk, you'll find Lister Place, a glorious Grade II listed house dating from 1720. Unlike the High Street, Church Walk isn't designed for a lot of vehicular traffic. There's a passing place or two down here. Off to the right behind these gates is the Priory, a house built for William Garnon in 1658. This is the oldest residential building in the village. And if you look the other way, you're greeted with the sight of the spire at Brant Bruton's church, dedicated to St. Helen. Now, do you remember in the Leadenham episode when we were stood on top of the Lincoln Cliff and we could see a church with a tall spire? And I thought it was Carlton on Trent. Well, it wasn't Carlton on Trent. It wasn't as far away as that. It was here. It was this church in Brant Bruton. And, you know, both churches, I'm sure if you remember the Carlton on Trent episode, have got massive tall spires. I'm not sure which one's the taller, quite frankly. I'm going to wager it's this one, though. Let's go and have a look at this church in a bit more detail. The Spire of St Helens is one of the tallest in Lincolnshire. It's 167 feet high, but it's commonly misquoted to be 198. It is shorter than it used to be, as it was reduced in height in 1897. Pevsner once described it as one of Lincolnshire's most elegant. Most of the church was heavily restored between 1874 and 1876. The oldest parts of the building date back to 1290. It was open, so let's go inside. A lot of the ironwork in here was made by the village's very own blacksmith, F. Cauldron. This cavernous church has some vintage features. Check out this Victorian funeral beer under the tower, for example. St Helens has been described in the past as being like a medieval dream. Its beauty is down mainly to Canon Frederick Heathcote Sutton. He was the rector here from 1873 until 1888 and created the church you see today after working with the architect George Frederick Bodley. I like this floor in the chancel. Look at this. Checkerboard pattern. Almost like a chessboard. In fact, exactly like a chessboard. So, depending on what piece I am depends on in what direction I move. I'm sure a few of you out there already know that I'm a chess player. Not a very good one, but I, I can play. So let's see, I've always fancied myself as a bishop, so I can move diagonally here, across the squares. Always staying to the same colour square. <laughs> it's quite fun, actually. Anyway, that's the church here in Brant Bruton. And now to move on and see what else this village has got. It's got plenty more, including one of my favourite pubs in Lincolnshire. The Generous Britain will catch that further around this route. From the churchyard, you can see Bruton House, which used to be the rectory, and it's now used as a school for autism and learning disabilities. Now we've emerged from the churchyard via a footpath onto Brant Bruton's main road. This is the High Street. Straight away, we have more landmarks. Here's the old Brant Bruton CV school, together with its attached schoolmaster's house. It's just one of a huge number of listed buildings in the parish. There are 44 in total, 39 in Brant Bruton and 5 in Stragglethorpe. As we start to head north, we pass a little garden or orchard area which is seemingly connected to the churchyard. I'm not sure on that one though. You'll notice the main street is very wide. Many of the houses along it date back to the coaching days of the 18th and 19th centuries. In those times, many of Brant Bruton's residents were based in London and used the village as a country retreat. How dare they? Nowadays, it's mostly locals, but the lovely characterful houses remain a joy to behold. There's no shop along this road, though. There used to be one in an old forge, this little brick hut, which now only opens for three hours a week every Wednesday for the post office. Just after that, you'll pass Brant House, easily one of the village's most dominating properties, dating back to the mid-18th century. 
So we've seen the current post office and of course it's not open all that often. The old post office however still stands and it's right here. It's this big white house at number 55. There it is right there. That's the former post office here in Brant, Bruton. Now of course been turned into a house. Now just past that there's a parish notice board on a wall over here near this red van. Looks a bit blank but it won't be in a moment when I put a card on it. I can tell you that for free. And then after that we're going to turn left to just beyond the red van because there's an interesting building to the left up there which we don't see many of. Here's the old red phone box and a bus stop. Brant Bruton is served by the number 47, which connects Newark to Lincoln. Just after that, we take a left turn into Meeting House Lane, aptly named because this is where the local Quakers meet. Prior to 1701, Quakers used to meet in their own homes. That was when local farmer Thomas Robinson gave this building to be used as a meeting house. At the back of the meeting house is the heritage room, which is used often by a number of local village organisations. The meeting room is always open, so let's go inside. It was originally a thatched barn with an attached 17th century cottage. The benches in the main room are all original and probably date back to when Quaker meetings first began in Brant Bruton. It has an upstairs gallery. Be careful on these stairs though because they're very narrow. The gallery was originally the cottage's bedroom. This would have been used initially by women for their own meetings which were separate to the religious ones downstairs. And you can view the main room from up here by opening these latched wooden panels. This really is a one of a kind building. Now, of course, we have seen Quaker meeting houses before, but we've never been able to get inside one. This is one of the reasons I was so excited to come to Brown Bruton, because I knew that this would be something special, something we don't normally see. And, you know, even though it's a religious building and, you know, we see plenty of those, it's something new. It's something fresh um, and it's it's brilliant, isn't it? It's so pokey. You have to mind your head in places because these low ceilings, um, can catch you out if you're not careful and do take care on them stairs as well if you want to come up here to the gallery it's worth it for the view up here though as i'm sure you'll agree the uh the view you get of the room below is probably unrivaled fantastic right time to leave the meeting house behind and let's go to the generous britain Here's the generous Britain pub, which dates back to around 1800. Inside its walls are decorated with historical photos of the village. There were at least two other pubs here. One was called the Red Lion and one was called the Fox, but there may have been more. There were certainly more businesses. You only have to look around you at this point to see a collection of Victorian shop fronts. We're now leaving the main road behind as we make our way to the playing field. We're taking a less travelled route to do so. This gravel path, which looks like someone's drive, runs towards a small stream which flanks the edge of the playing field. It passes a pumping station on the way. Hey, I never said I was only out here to film the historic stuff. Here's the playing field on which football can be played, but there's no current football team here as far as I'm aware. Nonetheless, it still has a sports pavilion and the whole thing is complemented by a big play area for children. This features a hilly area with tractor tires, a large climbing frame and a zip wire, as well as a fenced in area for the younger ones. Okay, so now we're at the most northern point of the village and we're going to start working our way back. There are some side streets on the right hand side as we go. There's a few landmarks in those and eventually we'll just head back to the car. Brilliant. Love, lovely little village is Brant Bruton. It's probably one of my favourites in North Kisteven.
This last section weaves its way around the side streets off the main road to the village's north. This is Swan's Lane. Guildford House meets us at the end, another magnificent 18th century listed building. Not all of them are on the high street. Generally speaking though, this area is more modern. Whilst there are clusters of older buildings, it's mostly 20th century housing. Malt Kiln Lane next, the name of which is a nod towards Brant Bruton's agricultural past. It's more of the same down here. I particularly like this sculpture which was standing in one of the gardens. It appears to be a bear with a baby bear on its head. At the end of the road is a Wesleyan Reform Chapel. This was put up for sale after one final carol service last December. We're back to the high street, familiar territory again. On this stretch there was once a shop called J.A. Kenwell's Stores. On to Guildford Lane next, which doesn't have much more than just housing. At the end, though, is a very historic row. These six almshouses, which date from 1860, were built by Sir John Sutton and were let to six poor deserving parish widows. And lastly, we have Brant Bruton and Stragglethorpe Village Hall, newly built in 2012 for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. And right next to the village hall there's an open space which I guess you could define as a village green. It's got some nice little uh, seat benches you could sit on, mostly around this tree here. Not in this weather obviously because you'd end up getting wet through. Having said that, I am wet through after walking around. But you know what, I thoroughly enjoy this place every time I come to it and I've enjoyed it as well today. It's just the weather has made it a bit of a, a damp squib, but hopefully You've uh, enjoyed this walk around Brant Bruton, I know I have. Time for me to amble back to the car and head for the next one and hopefully this weather starts to clear up before I get there. Just before we leave, there's time to talk about Brant Bruton's most famous resident. For 18 years, William Warburton called this village his home. He was a theologian and a writer and would go on to become the Bishop of Gloucester, a position he would hold until his death in 1779. He was born in Newark, and whilst living in the village, which he did in the early 1700s, his research resulted in two books. One of these was named The Alliance Between the Church and State, which was published in 1736. In addition to being rector here, he was also rector of Fursby in East Lindsay from 1730 until 1756, although he never lived in that village. Warburton's literary work also included editing many of the works of his more well-known literary peers, including Alexander Pope and none other than William Shakespeare. In 1747, his edition of Shakespeare was published, incorporating material from Pope's earlier edition. And that's it. Despite the deluge of rain that soaked me to the skin, I reckon Brant Bruton still looked pretty decent. And it's not every day you get to see the inside of an original Quaker meeting house, is it? Join me next week for another lovely North Kesteven village, this time without the rain. Bye for now. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>